Hello guys, welcome to study algorithms and today we would be looking at finding the first unique character in a string. First, I would go over some sample test cases and show you what do you mean by the first unique character. Next, we would discuss a brute force solution to the problem. We will then try to optimize it followed by a dry run of the code. So, let us dive into the problem. We start off by taking two examples. You are given a string that may or may not contain repeating characters. And your task is to find the index of the first unique character that you find while traversing through the string. So let us just take up example number one. The first string is given by 4 by 4 frog. Now this string, as you can see, has some characters that are repeated and some of them are unique. So let me just start off by writing down all the repeated characters and all the ones that are unique. So as you can see, F, O, U, R are repeated over here, over here and over here, while B, Y, G are the unique characters. So given the problem statement, you need to tell me what is the index of the first character that is unique. So if you start from the left, you would see that the first unique character is B and its index is 4. And hence, your answer should be 4 because B was your first unique character. It is not necessary that the unique character would occur somewhere between the string. It can also appear even at the beginning of the string. To show you, let me just show you one more example. Here I have example number two with the string given as I love to code. So over here, I will just list down all the repeated and all the unique characters. In this case, we had a lot of unique characters. But nonetheless, if I start traversing from the left, the first unique character that I would find is i and its index is 0. And hence, the answer for this case would be 0 because i was a repeating character. If you ever get a case in which none of the character is unique, then you just need to return minus 1. Let us try to see how we can go about solving this problem. These type of problems help you with interview preparation and they are asked by some of the major companies that hire you. So, a good developer would always try to find a solution to the problem first and then he would try to go on and optimize it. As soon as you see the problem, what comes to your mind? You would be thinking that if I can just start to compare each of these characters one by one, then maybe I can find out the first unique character. So, I start with the letter F, I go all the way over here and then I see, okay, F is occurring. And hence, this is not my unique character. I start with the letter O. I begin from the beginning and then I see, oh, O is occurring over here. And hence, this is also not my unique character. I start with the letter U. I again start from the beginning and I find a U somewhere in the middle. And hence, this is also not my answer. Going forward again and again, once you encounter the letter B, you start from the beginning and go all the way up to the end. And you see that this letter does not occur throughout this entire string. And hence, this was the first unique character that you found. Now, you just need to find the index of it. And the index of this character is 4. And hence, this is your answer. But I would like to highlight the problem with this kind of a solution. Let us say you are given a string something like this. In this case, you start with the letter M and traverse all the way to find, okay, M exists over here. Then you start with A, and then you see A exists over here. Then you would again encounter M, then you would again encounter A, and at the very end, you will get the letter L. And hence, you see that you are wasting a lot of time just traversing through the string again and again, again and again. This is not an ideal solution. What if the string expands a lot? What if there are like a thousand characters in the string? What if there are like 10,000 characters in the string? Then you would be wasting a lot of computation time just iterating over the entire string again and again. We definitely need to avoid it. How can we do that? Let's have a look. You might have noticed that in our previous approach, we were wasting time just by iterating over the string again and again. Why not we do some kind of a pre-processing and maintain some kind of a data structure so that we can store the results and use them later on. So for an optimized approach, I am creating a map that is a character frequency map. And this map would be storing the character and its frequency as you find it. So 
I would iterate over this string one by one. So I find the letter F, I update its frequency to be one. I find the letter O, then its frequency is one. Going forward by U, one, and then R, one, B is one, then Y is one. Now you see, you again get the letter F. You check your map, you already have that letter. So I'm, I would not add this element to my map. I would just update this frequency to two. Going forward, I get the letter O. So I would update this frequency to two. Similarly, I go ahead and update the frequency of all these characters. I get an F again, and hence I'm updating the frequency of F to be three. Frequency of R changes to three, and frequency of O changes to three also. You get to the last character that is G, and its frequency is 1. Now you have done this pre-processing. Remember that you have only scanned the array just once right now and you pre-processed all of that data and stored it in this entire map. In your next iteration, what you can do is just go over the string from left and go all the way up to the end. So I would start my traversal from the left side. Now I see the letter F. I check in my map, its frequency is 3, and hence it was not unique. I go to the letter O, its frequency is again 3, and hence this was not unique. Then U, then R, as soon as I come at the letter B, I would see that O, its frequency is 1, and hence this is a unique character, and since I'm going from left to right, this would be the first unique character that I would get. Now it's just a matter of index and you would already know the index that you're working on. So in this case, the answer would be four. The time complexity of this method is order of n. Let us just do a dry run of the code and see how this works in action. We start off by initializing an index variable that would return our last answer. We initialize this to minus one because if we don't find any unique character in the string, this should be our answer at the end. We also initialize a map that is a character frequency map and that would be storing the character and its subsequent frequency. To start off our string traversal, we make up a loop that goes from zero up to the length of the string. We initialize a variable C that would be pointing at each of the characters in the string. Next, we try to get the frequency of the character from the map and we and if we don't find any value, our default value is zero. We increase this frequency by one and we update the map. So we try to look up the value of F. We don't find anything over here. So we put F into the map with an updated value of one. Going forward, we go with O and we update the value of one. Then U, one, R and one. B is again one, Y is again one. Coming on to F again, we look up our map and now we would find some value. We get its frequency, we add one to it, and then we put it back in the map. So our map would become something like this. Once this entire loop is complete, our character frequency map would be totally updated to these values. Once this is done, we have all the pre-processed values in the character frequency map. We do a second scan of the string from zero up till the length. And now we would be just iterating over each of these indexes and looking at the frequency in the map. So we start by F, we see that the frequency is three, so neglect it. We go with O, frequency is three, neglect it. Going forward, once we reach B, we see that its frequency is one. This is our answer and this is the first unique string. We assign our index to this value and then we break out of the loop. Now this value is returned and hence you would get your answer as four. This problem may seem trivial in itself and you may wonder why to bother about an optimized solution. But such kind of small hurdles find their way in bigger and more complex problems. If you are not implementing these small parts correctly, you will increase your computation time and that is something that you don't want. You can find the link to the problem in the description below and please feel free to comment below in case of any doubts. Thank you.